Hey Wargamers, today we're going to talk about how to start playing Tau using the latest 9th edition codex for Warhammer 40,000. Now, whether you are a veteran 40k player or brand new to the hobby, now is a fantastic time to start playing Tau. We got a brand new codex, it's got really strong rules, and those rules are internally balanced in a way that there aren't a lot of bad choices. So no matter what you want to play, you're probably going to get a good game out of it. So that's fantastic. And that also means that you can make the army play a lot like it's presented in the lore, in the books, in uh, the art. And so you get the experience that you would want to get out of this army with this new rule set, which is really fantastic. That's not the case for every army. That's not the case for every codex. So uh, this is a really great element for people that are interested in playing Tau. Now... How do you actually start doing that? Well, if you're a veteran 40k player, you know you need the core rulebook. You know you need dice and rulers and all that sort of stuff, right? Uh, but if you're brand new to the hobby, make sure you start off with that, right? You need to understand the system. You need to have the rules down in order to actually get a game in. But once you have that, you also need the new codex. Make sure you pick up the new one, the one that's shown here, not the older versions, things that look different than this, because those uh, are out of date and not going to be useful to you. So make sure you pick up a brand spanking new codex. And then, of course, you need models. You need an army to actually play with. Now, which models you are going to pick up probably depend a lot on what you want to get out of your hobby, right? Do you want to spend more time painting and just getting a few casual games in? Are you looking for something that's going to be relatively cheap, but still get some models on the table? Or are you looking for something that's going to be much more competitive in the long run and give you a good foothold in a tournament scene? So regardless of what your goals are, we are going to talk about three different paths forward for you if you are looking to start Tau, particularly looking at what you should get, some potential 1,000 point army lists uh, as a basis, as a starting point for your collection, and then a few other things you might want to consider. All right, so if you're getting into this looking for more hobby elements or just for casual play, you really want to focus on buying, painting, and playing with models that you think are cool. This is kind of like the number one rule that I tell people when they're getting into Tau or just getting into 40k in general. Buy the things that you think are cool because the rules will change, the meta will change, that environment in which you're playing the game in will be variable. But the thing that will stay the same is the models, right? You get to hold on to those. And once you have them, they're there, right? So invest in those, right? Have those be the things that you really care about. Um, and the rest of it will come over time. So really, I, I really do mean that if you are buying an army just because the internet tells you to, uh, you probably aren't going to be in the hobby very long because you, you're you probably not going to have as much fun with that army as you would one that you develop based on your own interests. So really, rule of cool here, pick up the things that interest you, not what someone says to buy. Like, I don't know, me, for example. <laughs> um, and this is good for Tau, right? Like, Tau are a great army to do that with because Tau have a diversity of models with very different aesthetics. So we have our infantry, uh, like this guy here. This is Dark Strider. Uh, he kind of gives you a general idea of what a, a typical Tau looks like. Um, we have battle suits, which are, you know, mechs that they pilot. We have Kroot and Vespid, which are different species of alien auxiliaries. And all these different models have very different looks and very different geometry and different painting and modeling techniques that you're going to use in getting them ready for the tabletop. So it's a nice opportunity for you to try a bunch of different approaches and figure out something that really works for you. So Tower Great Army for that reason. Uh, and when you are doing this, you probably really want to start not all by yourself. Right? You want to start with a friend or get plugged into a local community. And through those social interactions, you're going to have a better time. You're going to have more fun. You're going to learn more, learn more quickly. Um, and you can kind of hold each other accountable, right? You can help build each other's armies, help learn how to play the game, how to play your army more effectively. So that's a general rule, not just if you're looking for casual play or just for hobby stuff. Uh, in general, this is a good idea to plug into some sort of community, but especially if that's what you're looking for, right? If you're just look, if you're really looking for someone to have a beer and pretzels game with, uh, that's essential, right? And then 
if you are looking for maybe a little bit more of a of a competitive side too, you can plug into things called escalation leagues where a bunch of people start a brand new army at the beginning of the league and build that army over time. So it's a good way to get experience with a new army, uh, get experience with a new rule set, but do so in a way that everyone's coming into it with a little bit of the same background, right? They're they're all new to something, which is really useful. Uh, so you don't walk into an environment where you just get stomped right away because someone has been playing for 20 years and you're brand new. So escalation leagues are really cool like that. And of course, more generally, you can tap into online resources, right? You can find that community through Discord or Facebook or Reddit or whatever, uh, Instagram, right? Those are all great resources or to see what other people are doing, talk to other people about what you're doing and ask questions. Uh, we have a invasive wargaming discord. If you want to join us down there, that's a great community, but there are also, you know, generalist how, uh, versions of those things and general 40 K things as well. So, uh, plug into online resources because they're really a great way to just kind of talk more about the hobby and get more out of your hobby. So overall, if you're getting into the hobby just for kind of the fun of it, just for casual play, do whatever you want, right? Like have fun with it. Pick up the models that you think are cool, test them out, see how it goes. Like that's the best way to get into the hobby. That's the way that most people, I think, enter the hobby is doing that. And there's nothing wrong with it. So pick up what you think is cool. Have some fun. That's a way to get into the the hobby, especially if you're just looking for some beer and pretzels games. Now, if you're looking to start off a little bit more in the middle of the road where you're getting a pretty functional force, but you're not spending as much money as you might need for a like really cutting edge competitive list, uh, you might want to do something like this. So I'm recommending that if you're looking for that middle of the road approach, you pick up one of the Tau Empire combat patrols. This includes a ghost keel, a unit of stealth suits, a fire blade, an ethereal, and a unit of fire warriors. It's the new kind of intro box for Tau. It's, it replaces the start collecting box. Uh, with this thing and uh, you know it's it's a good deal if you're looking to pick up these models so you do get some savings that's why it's the basis for this type of approach Uh, but then on top of that you want to pick up a unit of crisis battle suits uh, a box of crude carnivores another box of fire warriors and then a commander and so the goal here is to you know give you a fairly cost effective list that's going to give you, you know, as much models as you can get for a relatively lower price, but have those models be things that you're going to want to use in the future. So uh, that's what I would recommend picking up. Let's take a look at what you could build with this in terms of a 1,000 point list. All right, so this is a Borkan Sept Detachment. Uh, Borkan is one of the sub-faction types that you can select for Tau. It is focused on extending their range and also making their vehicles and battle suits a little bit more durable. Um, so I think it's a really good learning Sept, a really good learning sub-faction for most players because it doesn't introduce additional mechanics really it's more of kind of the same with not a lot to remember so uh, i think it's a really good learning sept for that reason it's also just a pretty darn good sept to begin with so uh, that's what we're going to go with for both this list and the more competitive list of course you could take a different sept with really minor changes so uh, view this as any way you want you can you know take this as far as you could take it as tau um, we're not using any special characters so this would easily convert to a different sept if you wanted to do that um, we're going to use emergency dispensation which is a strategy that gives you an extra relic uh, twice uh, we're also going to use promising pupil in order to get an additional warlord trait so we're spending a few command points right off the bat the list starts off with a hq choice of a cadre fire blade with ortu's lantern as a relic cadre fire blades are going to improve the output of your fire warrior teams uh, and they are uh, he's also a source of marker lights which you're going to use to uh, basically improve your um, ability to hit with various different core units um, or two's lantern is a relic that gives you five additional marker lights off of him so that makes him a really useful source of marker lights in this list especially given that we're at 1000 points we're not going to have a ton of opportunity to get marker lights on the list uh, as we have it built so that's a that's a economics uh, <laughs> that's an economic choice there um, ethereal is our next hq choice he's going to be on a hover drone that's the way he comes uh, with the kit it's also a really practical thing uh, because he'll want to be able to zip around the battlefield um, 
we're giving him the humble stave, which allows him to do two invocations. Uh, that is a useful tool because that's a really big force multiplier. Ethereals are your force multiplier of your army, and uh, they're really good at it. We're also giving him the Warlord trait exemplar of the Monka. That's going to allow him to make a nearby unit uh, re-roll their wounds if they're firing at a close enough target. So um, a really effective uh, Warlord trait there. Our third HQ and final is going to be a Cold Star Commander. We're giving him a shield generator, two burst cannons, a high output burst cannon. We are replacing one of those burst cannons with the pro, uh, prototype weapon DWO2 advanced burst cannon, then giving him the relic from Borkan, the overdrive uh, system, and then the warlord trait of Seeker of Perfection. These things uh, work very well together in the way that we're improving the output of his uh, weapons and also um, getting some mortal wounds on top of it. So uh, the overdrive system with Seeker Perfection on top of being from Borkan means burst cannons are super nasty, and being on a cold star means that they are easily uh, applied to any target you want because cold stars are fast. And cold stars also make crisis suits fast. So we'll see crisis suits pop up later in this list. For troops, we have two 10-man units of breacher teams. That's the only way you can bring breachers uh, is in 10-man units. So uh, easy, that's done. Then we're taking 13 Kroot. Uh, Kroot come in a 16-man box. So uh, you're not going to use all the Kroot here. You, you could with some minor adjustments if you wanted to. Um, but we're going to use 13 of them. Pretty close. Then uh, we're going to take the Ghost Kill out of that Combat Patrol box. We're giving it a Fusion Collider, two Burst Cannons, and an Early Warning Override. The Early Warning Override is a free choice. You can take the two Burst Cannons and the Fusion Collider and really do some good damage with this Ghost Kill, which can deploy upfield at the beginning of the game. So he doesn't have to deploy in your deployment zone. Gives you a lot of tactical flexibility with him and some nice denial opportunities as well. We're also going to take the stealth suits from the box. Stealth suits on Borkan are really uh, durable. Uh, because they are battle suits, they are pretty hard to remove from the tabletop. So having just a three-man unit is still a nuisance. And they have burst cans like a lot of the uh, battle suits in this list. And they are going to be uh, able to put out a fair amount of damage, especially if you select the Montka tactical philosophy. So at the beginning of the game, after uh, you determine who is going first, you get to select your tactical philosophy, either Manka or Kao Yun. Manka is the favorite of the two. It allows you to uh, count as uh, staying stationary in the first three turns of the game if you moved, uh, for shooting purposes that is, and you also get uh, better AP and improved wounding uh, from Manka as well. So it's a really effective uh, tactical philosophy, especially at close range, which cell suits are also, like the Ghost Keel, able to achieve by deploying upfield early on. So uh, they are going to be really effective at getting that uh, boost to their output uh, right on right on at the beginning of the game. We're giving them two marker drones as well. Marker drones, again, are providing marker lights, which we're using to uh, improve the chances of hitting with various units in this list. So marker lights here uh, is a nice little boost. And then we get to the crisis suits. And the crisis suits are really your heavy hitters of the list. They are each equipped with a burst cannon, a plasma rifle, and a fusion blaster. Um, again, burst cannons with my cop, very effective. Plasma and fusion are just inherently punchy weapons. They're one-shot weapons, but they do a lot of damage when they get through. So um, we're covering a, a few different bases here, a highly functional uh, set of crisis suits here. Uh, we're giving them two marker drones and three shield drones. Shield drones are going to be able to soak up some damage for them, make sure that they stay on the tabletop longer. Two of those crisis suits are going to have shield generators, uh, giving them an invulnerable save. And then we are also going to be taking an early warning override on uh, the sergeant or the Shaz Vray model here. He, that's going to allow them to overwatch for free. They still have to use the stratagem, but they don't have to spend a CP. Um, and then we are going to take an Iridium armor on one of the Shazwi, one of the non-Sergeant models that also will have a shield generator. So uh, giving them a little bit extra durability here. The Iridium armor makes their um, armor save a 2-up instead of a 3-up. So this list is designed to have a very aggressive first couple turns. You're looking at your Crisis Suits, your Cold Star, uh, your Ghost Kill and Stealth Suits, all being very aggressive units at the beginning of the game. Bre Breachers as well will want to do that. Um, 
You could easily switch these out for strike teams so you have a little bit more range. You don't have to do as much movement with your breachers. Uh, but either way, uh, it gives you a pretty good basis here um, with some cost savings by using the combat patrol box. That's really the, the overarching design element of this list is how to use the combat patrol box, uh, but do it in a way that you're actually going to have some good support for it and some overall positive outcomes from the list. And I think this is a fine middle of the road list for that reason. All right, and then our third option is for someone that's looking to get into competitive play pretty darn quickly here. Um, and in this case, I'm not paying attention to cost. I'm not trying to save money by buying the combat patrol box and, and using that, I'm not necessarily even looking at how the models look. Although I think these all are, are, are pretty snazzy models. What I am looking at is a list that I think has a lot of components that will be staples of many competitive builds, both now, right after the codex, but moving forward. So this is kind of a future-proof set of models, something that you will likely see useful for a long period of time in a diversity of builds. So with that said, uh, it is a little bit more expensive, right? So we're about $100 more expensive than the kind of middle-of-the-road list that I started off with just a moment ago. Um, but uh, I think it is a little bit more punchy. So we're looking at picking up a commander here, an ethereal, which you can buy in a little in a little blister pack, right? Uh, then three boxes of fire warriors that can be either built as a strike team or a breacher team. Two devilfish. If you wanted to, you of course could pick up hammerheads here instead. If you pick up the hammerhead box, it can build the sky ray, it can build a hammerhead, and it can also be used as a devilfish. So depending on how interested you are in saving money that way, you certainly could. But the devilfish is available as its own box too. So uh, you can pick two of those up. You can have Pathfinders. And then uh, this list is going to use some weapon loadouts that are not readily available based strictly on the contents of these boxes. Uh, so I'm going to be using something called a Cyclic Ion Blaster. That's a weapon that is only available in the commander box. So you'll either want to hit up eBay or find some third-party vendors to buy something that you can at least call a cyclic ion blaster. Or you know what, if you're just if you're just kind of real cool in it, proxying it, just say, hey, this other thing, I'm going to count that as a cyclic ion blaster too. Totally cool if you're starting off. Not cool if you're looking to go to a GT, a GT or RTT or any type of organized event. So uh, if you're looking to get into competitive play right away and you want to use cyclic ion blasters, Make sure that you are paying attention to that as you start building your suits. All right, again, this is a Borkhan Battalion Detachment. Again, Borkhan, I think, is a really good learning sept. It's also pretty darn effective. So um, we're going to go with that. Uh, we're using Emergency Dispensation one time here for an extra relic and then Promising Pupil again for just one extra Warlord trait. Again, we have the Ethereal and Cold Star returning. I think they're very good choices. You could go with a Crisis Commander. Crisis Commanders are also very good, or an Enforcer. They're three, those are two other types of Commander Battlesuit. They all have slight variations on their stat line and the things that they do, but the general theme is that they are providing rerolls uh, via the Master of War aura and also uh, buffing your Crisis Suits directly in various ways. I like the Cold Star because it makes your crisis suits go zippy zippy fast. And that's a really useful thing, especially in a smaller point game where the board is less crowded. So I like the Cold Star. Besides, it looks killer. It's a very cool model. So uh, we're going with Ethereal on Hover Drone. Again, it has the Humble State allowing us to use two invocations instead of just one. Um, and then we are giving him the Exemplar of Manka again, allowing him to uh, give rerolls to Wound. For the Cold Star, we're giving him a Shield Generator, a Plasma Rifle this time, um, a High Output Burst Cannon, and then we're giving him another Burst Cannon and uh, upgrading it to the Prototype uh, DWO2 Advanced Burst Cannon. Uh, then we're also giving him the Overdrive System and then Seeker Perfection again. So same deal. I think that's a really good Cold Star loadout, uh, but of course there are many different Cold Star builds that you can take for about the same price. So again, this is a this is a place where you could customize a list based on how you're uh, enjoying it, how you want to play, for very little difference in the points cost of the model. So one of the nice things about the current codex is that you can get very similar builds um, in terms of price that function very differently. So that is a really nice component of list building because you can easily switch things out. And that's true here too. Um, I'm returning with two breacher teams and a strike team. 
Both of those breacher teams are going to start off in two devilfish that I have purchased down below. Um, that's going to allow them to get up the board very quickly. And I can use a stratagem called combat debarkation to get out of my devilfish after it's moved. So that's going to allow them to be very aggressive and benefit from Monka and use their pulse blasters, which are best at a very short range. So the breacher, devilfish, Monka. Uh, combat debarkation stratagem combo is killer, and uh, we're going to use it here. I also have a unit of 10 strike teams, or 10 fire warriors in a strike team. Uh, these are the longer range ver variants again, and they're going to be able to function outside of a devilfish uh, more effectively. You also have some different stratagems that you can use with the strike team, allowing you to be more efficient in your uh, stratagem economy. Then we're going to pick up 10 pathfinders. Pathfinders are going to be our source of marker lights here. Uh, that's why we don't have uh, things like Ortu's Lantern or anything like that. We have a whole unit of Pathfinders, and they are going to have two rail rifles. Uh, rail rifles are nasty little weapons that can uh, do some mortal wounds, uh, but then Pathfinders themselves are an excellent source of marker lights too because they can... Um, they can move and perform the marker light action in a way that no other unit can. They start the marker light action at the end of the movement phase and therefore have better visibility to their targets. Uh, that's not something that you see for other source of marker lights like marker drones, for example. And so pathfinders are really useful in that way. Then we get to our workhorse unit of crisis battle suits. Again, this is going to be a three-man unit because that's what comes in the box. And we're using cyclic ion blasters on all three of them. You'll have one from the Cold Star, but you'll want to pick up two more in order to make this work. We're giving each of them a cyclic ion blaster and a plasma rifle and a fusion blaster. The plasma and fusion, though you'll have plenty of those based on the kit, so don't worry about that. Then we have two marker drones here, uh, three shield drones in order to give the unit a little bit more durability. Uh, two of those battle suits are going to have target locks, allowing them to ignore cover, uh, ignore light cover. And then uh, one of them is going to have a shield generator. That one that has a shield generator, one of the Shazui, is going to also have iridium armor. So he'll have a two up, four up uh, save giving them a pretty decent amount of durability between that uh, Iridium Armor suit and the drones. Plus, they'll have a lot of output. Uh, that Cyclic Ion Plasma Fusion combo is very deadly for anything Toughness 5 or more, and so they'll be able to do a lot of work for you, especially at a 1,000-point game. It's going to be hard to get them off the table. And so that's the uh, more competitive list, I think. Again, it's not going to win a GT, mostly because GTs happen at 2,000 points, not uh, 1,000 points. So <laughs> but um, I think it's a basis for a lot of competitive builds that you could build later on. Before we go, a couple things I want you to keep in mind. One is that the old box sets are a really good deal. So if you're just starting off and you go to your local game store and you're able to find an older box set, uh, in particular, the start collecting boxes, buy it. It's a great deal, uh, especially with price increases coming. You won't regret buying that start collecting box because it has many things that we have routinely used here, including an ethereal, fire warriors, and crisis suits. So it's a, it's a really good deal. Pick it up if you find it. But there are other older boxes too, uh, like the Firebase, uh, Firebase support cadre or um, the Star Pulse Cadre or like the Advanced Pathfinder Cadre or something like that. Um, like lots of different variations on many of the units that we spoke about here. So they're generally a good thing if you can find them, um, but they're out of production. So good luck. Uh, barring that, eBay is a great place to find cheap models, especially if you don't care about their condition. If you're interested in doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, maintenance, let's say, uh, eBay is fantastic. If you if you own super glue uh, and a hobby knife, eBay is fantastic. <laughs> uh, and then a point that I want to make up front, uh, which is a good thing that I put it at the end of the video, right? <laughs> is that you should consider magnetizing your battle suits. Uh, this is something that is really intimidating for people when they first start off with the hobby. They, you know, you just spent some reasonable money on a unit of crisis suits, for example. You want to make sure that they look great. And so it can be really intimidating to, say, uh, drill a hole in them and put a magnet in there. But trust me, you'll do fine. It's, it's, 
if you are new to magnetizing things, Tau are a great way to get into that because they have so many flat surfaces on their battle suits uh, that it's very easy to magnetize, right? You know exactly where you need the magnet to go. There's no nooks or crannies that you have to work through. It's a flat surface. Put a little hole in there. Get the magnet in. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, a great way to start off magnetizing, and you won't regret it uh, because it will future-proof your models, right? We talked about specific loadouts here for your crisis suits, but what happens in a month when you want to try something different? Then you don't have to proxy. You don't have to say, okay, well, this unit, even though it has a plasma rifle and a fusion blaster and a cyclic ion blaster, really it has all burst cannons. Right, you don't have to do that. You can literally change the loadout of your suit uh, to match your uh, list, which is required by tournaments, but also just a really good thing to do. Feels good. Um, and you'll be able to adapt based on how the meta changes, based on how rules change. Uh, right. So like I have crisis suits that I bought in the early 2000s that I'm still using because they're magnetized. Right. Easy. Uh, you'll want to use three by two millimeter or one eighth by one sixteenth inch magnets. Uh, there are many places that you can find these, but of course, I will recommend friend and sponsor of the channel, themagnetbaron.com. You can use code invasive22 to get 10% off your order there. Uh, and they have the, the three by two millimeter magnets that work perfectly for magnetizing crisis suits. Finally, what are you going to do after you get all those crisis suits magnetized, win a bunch of games, and you want to build a bigger army? Uh, well, you can pick up more crisis suits. <laughs> you can pick up broadsides. Broadsides are awesome. And also magnetize your broadsides, right? Uh, a little bit more complicated with the heavy rail rifle, but still very doable. Uh, magnetize your broadsides. And then maybe look at Vespid. Vespid are very punchy alien auxiliaries, very different from the things that we talked about on the list today. So they're fun to paint, fun to have in your in your hobby, and probably going to get new models in the future sometime. <laughs> um, but but the ones that are out there now are, are, are good too. You can find all alternative models too that are very nice. So uh, those are kind of the three top units I would suggest picking up for any of the lists that we talked about. If you're looking to expand your army, uh, there are other things you could look at picking up too, including more fire wars, more devil fish, um, looking at pathfinders, stealth suits. Uh, really one of the great things about this book's book is that it's hard to go wrong. So this, when we get into expanding your army, maybe lean a little bit more into the rule of cool pick what is appealing to you but uh if you're looking for a little bit more guidance those are my three crisis broadsides and vespid you really uh will enjoy using those uh right now as you you start off your army so check them out as always thanks for watching let me know what you think in the comments below how would you start your army or if you're just getting into tau was this useful are you going to try it out let me know how it goes always happy to have a conversation in the comments below and as always Happy Wargaming. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. A while ago I made my own miniature. If you are interested in showing your support for the channel on the tabletop, you can pick one up either on Etsy if you're in the US or directly through me worldwide. Special thanks to our sponsor, The Magnet Baron, and also all the good folks over on Patreon, especially Mate Monk, Marcy, A Little Pink Monster, Benaby Jones, Durza, Ever Keller, Robbie Goodwin, Jose Gomez, Ruger, Drew Pratley, Michael Byrne, Zealous Brinstone, Scott Heater, Stephen Cowan, Jared Egler, Chris Kessler, Tao Oswell, and Shifty.